She had cheated on me with a door-to-door -door salesman that came to the door the day we had gotten into that argument. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to submit a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, you've gone through something uh, like a bad relationship and got treated bad and you came out victorious and you know, you came out hurt, but you know, you eventually became a better person because you decided that ultimately you should be focusing on yourself and pursuing your dreams and becoming the best version of yourself and you did that send those stories in someone listening could be going through the same exact situation hearing your story could be very helpful so uh send those stories into that email but uh you guys read the title so let's just get into it so subject my story thanks for doing what you do even though I have gone through what I have gone through, your stories have still helped me understand the patterns of a female nature. Leave me anonymous to the web, but if anyone behind the scenes is asking you about business, feel free to give them my contact. Okay, cool. But um, he continues and says, I don't know how long this will be as I'm typing it out spur of the moment. I got married early, like 21. I am a firm believer that this should be illegal, but let me explain. She was beautiful, she was smart, she was sexy. She always wore the right clothes and knew all the right things to say. I thought that by marrying her early that I was locking in a unicorn. Long story short, our marriage starts having issues. We had two major issues. The first issue revolved around her not wanting to work or go to school. I was making decent money at the time and could afford her to stay at home, but I didn't like it. I was adamant that she had to be doing something. The second issue was the one that would blindside me. One day before work, we get into an argument, and I end up having to leave for work, so the argument was unresolved. I get home from work expecting to have some contention on my hands, only for there to be none. She's acting totally normal, and doesn't even bring the morning argument up. When I was asking her what's up, she tells me that she hung out with some friends during the day and she got to see things from a different perspective. I'm like, cool, what an idiot I was. Soon she's hanging out with these friends fairly regularly and I can't be happier because I finally have a bit more freedom to play video games or chill with my guys. About a week later, we are staying at her mom's place for the night and she's getting ready to leave and hang out with her girlfriend. Her phone is right next to me on the nightstand. As I'm reading, the phone buzzes. Not intentionally, but out of curiosity, I look at the screen, and it says something hella sketchy. I can't remember exactly what it was, because it was 10 years ago, but it was something to the effect of, I can't wait to smash again. Don't be late. Dumbfounded, I didn't know what to do, so I unlocked the phone, we didn't have codes, and read the text string. There was irrefutable evidence right in front of me. At first she tried to lie, but as the argument got heated, her mom came upstairs and I showed her mom the evidence. Her mom and her were best friends, so she told the truth to her mom, despite denying the truth 30 seconds ago to me. She told me if I wanted to leave her, I should just leave her, and she finished getting ready and left. Wow. Like the simp I was, I sat there in disbelief. After about five minutes, I walked out after her and found her arguing in the parking lot with her mom. Thankfully, her mom was on my side. I went home and started to investigate and found that she had cheated on me with a door-to-door -door salesman that came to the door the day we had gotten into that argument. After a day or so, her mom dropped her off to our apartment and told us we needed to talk. Because I was a simp, I decided to forgive her and try to work things out. I demanded access to her phone, and I installed a secret keylogger on the computer. Skipping over some things here, but after a year passes, she comes home one day and tells me that she wants a divorce. I ask her if it's someone else, and she says no. She tells me she's going to leave by the weekend. She tells me she's going to leave by the weekend, and she starts packing little things here and there. I begged and pleaded with her not to go. 
I did my best version of the pick me dance and even thought about doing something very horrible to myself. Man, I was a wimp. I decided when she was away from the house, I would check the key logger, as I hadn't done it in a while. Since she was at home constantly, I couldn't do this until she left to live with her mother. When I checked it, I found that she was cheating on me with four guys and one girl. I was devastated. Cried for hours, but I knew what I had to do. I'm not big on revenge. But I knew that I had to draw a line. I wanted to end on a positive note. So I called her and told her that I'd give her the divorce she wanted. But I wanted one last date to end things on a positive note. She reluctantly agreed but stated that she wouldn't go unless I told her why I had such a quick change of heart. I told her I wouldn't tell her until after she agreed. We set a date for the next day. I took her to her favorite restaurant. We laughed and I remembered why I fell in love with her in the first place. Fast forward to me dropping her back to her car and giving her one last hug goodbye. She says that I have to hold up my end of the bargain and tell her why I had a change of heart. I tried to avoid it by saying that it wasn't important but she persisted. Eventually I caved. I told her that I knew that she was cheating on me and she can go her way in peace. She denied and gaslit so strongly that if I had not seen the evidence, I would have been persuaded. Honestly, it was an Oscar-worthy performance, but her gaslighting only served to tick me off. Since she didn't know about the keylogger, she didn't know that I knew all her passwords and had gotten into her Facebook and email. Because of this, I had a plethora of info on everything. After her monologue, I told her, so you didn't cheat? She's like, no. I'm like, then who is John? Fake name. She's like, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm like, oh, really? Well, just let it go. She refused to admit the truth and she refused to let it go. So I was like, so you don't know John such and such? She's like, no. So I was like, his number isn't such and such? She's like, no. So I pulled out my cell phone and put it on speaker and started dialing the number. The look of panic in her eyes was priceless. She pleads with me to hang up the phone. So I hang it up. And I'm like, he doesn't know you're married, does he? And I'm like, are you going to admit it now? And she still denied. She was like, okay, okay, I know him. And I'm like, did you sleep with him? She's like, no. So without a word, I started dialing him on speakerphone again. She pleads even harder. So I tell her, I'm not going to hang up until she admits it. So finally, she admits that she cheated on me. I didn't see any reason to bring up anything else or anyone else at this point. And I'm like, why would you make me do all that? If you're going to cheat, at least be woman enough to admit it. She curses me out, gets in her car, and speeds off throwing our wedding album out of the window as she does it. A weight is lifted off my shoulders, but great pain and sorrow are put there in its place. Fast forward about six months, and I start trying to get a divorce. I keep having her served, but she won't sign them. My attorney and I had her served three times, and she keeps finding a way out of it. She instead tells me that she wants to work things out. And that we shouldn't get divorced. But at this point, I am resolute. The lawyer gives me the idea of having another date with her on the contingency that she signs the papers. He slipped in a paper among the divorce papers that waived her involvement for needing to be at court or anything. Basically, it was like a no take backsies. She agreed to the date as if it was a chance to win me back in her eyes. Before anything happened... I told her that if she didn't sign immediately, that I would leave. She made me promise not to file them right away, if the night went well. I agreed, but I lied. After she signed the papers, I put them into my car and went into the restaurant with her. I waited until we got seated and acted like I was going to the restroom and bailed. I just wanted to get her far away from the papers so that she could not destroy them. (laughs) Fast forward two years. I started a company and climbed the corporate ladder. I am now in charge of all the technology for my firm and my technology based side business turns a pretty good profit. Every once in a blue moon I'll see people who used to be mutual friends of ours and they somehow still hold the delusion that we will get back together. They tell me she's miserable and I tell them that her info has nothing to do with me. More of the story, number one, never forgive cheating. Number two, they will never tell the truth unless compelled. Number three. If you chase your purpose, you'll have something to show for it. But if a woman is your purpose, she can walk out at any time and you'll have nothing to show for it. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. 
first and foremost, man, um, yeah, guys, if you if you guys want to ask him any type of uh, business advice, go ahead and uh, um, let me know in the comments. But for you, if you want to send in um, how you started your business and how you became successful, maybe, you know, some people listening can learn from it. Hey, feel free to send that in. But uh, man, the gaslighting, the lying. Isn't it amazing how they can look? You had all this evidence. And the fact that you had to go as far as, okay, I'm going to dial this guy in front of you to get her to finally admit it. It is the worst when you know something and you're holding it back because you want them to tell you the truth. And I know why you did that. At least I know why I did it in the past. I was, I was like you at a point, you know what I'm saying? I was like you like, okay, she did this, but she may be really sorry and she might really regret it. So I just needed her to tell me the truth and it, and I felt like it would have made it easier for me to forgive her. But when you have that evidence and they still don't tell you the truth or, you know, they give you a half truth, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. But then I later realized how she's going to take that to her grave. She's not going to admit any wrongs. She's not going to come out and tell her guy a lot of the times, so most of the time, if she's trying not to get a divorce, she's going to say, OK, I'll give you what you want. OK, I hung out with the guy, but we didn't sleep together. You're like, come on. I have I have messages of him saying like that was some good good or something. Or you are telling me you've been sneaking off with this guy, but you never slept together. Or they'll say something like we just kissed. That's it. It was just a kiss. Like it's the lies. They give you those half truths, man. And it's frustrating, but man, isn't it funny? She was all like when she, when you caught her the first time and you saw those messages, she got upset and she continued to leave. She still left the house. She says, screw you. I don't care. Okay, whatever. You found out what I was doing. I'm still going to go get this, this from this dude. I'm still about to go smash. She had no respect for you, man. And I, I get it. You were young and you were hurt. You know, you were young and you were hurt. And you're thinking like, man, I want to save my marriage. And whoever this guy is and the messages, he's taking my wife away. This is my wife. This is my life. He's trying to destroy my life. And you're fighting to get her back. You're crying. You're begging her not to leave. And then what happens? You come to your senses and you're like, you know what? I deserve better. And I don't, I don't need to be going through this crap with this woman. So you decide, yes, I'm going to get a divorce. I'm going to get up out of here. Now what? Oh, I don't want a divorce anymore. Oh, why are you leaving? You know why? She thought she was leaving her for another woman. She thought you found somebody else. And she didn't like that. She started to feel abandoned. No, 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 stay. Let's work this out. And you told, and you actually told her, hey, I, I, you cheated on me. I know you're still cheating. So it's over. It's a wrap. No, we can figure this out. Let's do this. No, 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 no. Because now you want to walk away and she's feeling abandoned. It's ridiculous. Here's the thing. If you would have forgave her, and she didn't sign those papers and you worked it out, guess what she would have been doing? Still cheating. It would have never stopped. Climbing up that corporate ladder would have probably never happened. It may be, but it probably wouldn't have never happened. And starting that side business probably would have never happened. So I'm glad you got rid of her and you found out a way to get rid of her and you did. Salute to you, man. I'm happy for you. Feel free to send in email about how to become successful if you want to teach guys how to become successful like you did starting your business and everything that's amazing man salute to you thanks for sending in this email i really enjoyed it thank you guys if you want to send in a story send it to true story nation at gmail.com here i'll put it on the screen that's true story nation at gmail.com and i will catch you guys at the next one